Hey there, my fellow explorers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid. Episode 10, Alarms and Points of Interest. So now that I have Carpentry um, two, Volume 2 read, as you can see, I have another multiplier here, allowing me to level up even faster. So in order to, um, to remove access to the second floor, let's first put down sheet ropes. And for sheet ropes, I'm just going to need scissors, which I always keep in my backpack, and that's it. And the most ideal way to do that, and, and nails, I'm going to need nails. And I don't have nails on me right now, so I'm going to need to go pick up some nails from my construction box. Um, so when you walk over to certain clothing, you can rip it up into smaller little pieces, which are good for bandages and also for sewing into your clothing if you have a needle and thread. Or you can turn it into sheet ropes. Uh, not everything can be turned into sheet ropes. So as you can see from this person, I can turn his jacket, his pants, his shirt, and his socks into sheet ropes. And yes, I don't know why socks can be turned into sheet ropes, but they can. So I'm going to be stripping the zombies around the base to make sheet ropes. So that I can hang them from the base and quickly climb up and the reason i want multiple sheet ropes if you're wondering is that zombies do have the ability to pull sheet ropes down so if you only have one sheet rope to get in and out of your base it's entirely plausible for a zombie to wander up and rip it down having you lose access to your base and unless you make like a staircase or something like that and staircases, if you were wondering, are much higher level uh, carpentry. It requires carpentry six. So if you somehow didn't prepare a bunch of sheet ropes and zombie or or got really unlucky and zombies pulled all the sheet ropes off, uh, you will not have access to your base until you hit carpentry six if you've removed the, the staircase. In this case, um, I'm not destroying the staircase, I'm just destroying some flooring. So I could instead just put the flooring back, which only requires carpentry level one. So it's less destructive than using a sledgehammer to destroy the stairs. And I'll explain that in a minute. So now that I have all the sheet ropes, uh, I hope I have nails. Actually, I'm not sure I do. Maybe I don't. I thought I collected nails. There's other ways to get nails, so I'm not too worried about that just yet. So let's get nails the other way. What's my weight at? 78 and holding? Okay. I'm going to put uh, some of the sheet ropes here just because they're heavy and encumbering. I'm going to have four on me. So the one way is to get nails is to just disassemble uh, furniture. Obviously, finding a box of nails is going to be a lot more useful. Um... And you'll find boxes of nails most easily in hardware stores, but there's no hardware store in Rosewood uh, or garages, outbuildings, rural supply stores, that kind of thing. But mostly in garages in Rosewood. But I can recover a few nails from disassembling furniture like this. And then also one of the advantages of disassembling furniture is it will level up my carpentry skill as I do it. The higher level carpentry skill that I have, the more likely I'll gain resources back from disassembling. Um, but if you see my experience is at 8.75 and I disassemble this chair, it's going to go up a little bit. Up to 15. And in this case, I got a plank of wood from that chair. So now I'm just going around dismantling everything wood. And here's my first nail. It's not much, but I need them. Here's three more or two more. And the scrap wood is useful for burning for heat. And the planks are useful for building, for barricading or constructing things, etc. In truth, I'd rather have planks. Um, the chance of you getting planks goes up as your carpentry skill goes up. So high level carpenters will get a lot more planks than low level carpenters because my carpentry skill is low enough that I'm more or less just smashing this furniture to bits and hoping that it's salvageable. And 
just about everything made of wood can be um, dismantled in this way. So these counters here aren't storage counters. They don't have shelving, so I can dismantle them too. Um, so another thing that I want to make with these is um, a wooden fence. And I'll explain why. Uh, sheet ropes can only be attached to railings and fences. So I will do my first sheet rope um, now as an example. So if I right click right here with nails and sheet rope in my inventory, I can add an escape rope. And then if I hold E, I can climb down. And in this case, I climb like kind of into shelving, which is weird, and hold E to climb up. Zombies cannot go up and down. Only us humans can. Um, but these sheet ropes are a little blind, meaning that I can't exactly see what's below me before I climb down which is a little sketchy. So the reason I wanted the planks is so that I can create a fence here. So let's put a fence uh, in this corner. And the sound I'm producing might piss off a zombie. And then I can add a sheet rope here. So now I can climb down from the roof and on this roof, I have a lot more better, I have a lot better visibility than I do inside. So I have a way to get into my base from outdoors, which is just easier to do. So I'm going to climb this one now and deal with that zombie that is, uh, that is breaking down my garage. Hey, you. Cut it out. The quality of the building. Oh, you have an annotated map. Oh, a Rosewood annotated map. Uh, so there's a bug out bag in this bar. When they come, and they will, take what you can carry and disappear into the forest to the west. And there's a bug out bag in this bar. I know from experience it's a bar. Um, the other thing I could do is these um, dumpsters now, I can move because I have uh, I have carpentry level 2, which is the requir requirement. So I'm going to move one dumpster a little bit more out in the open, and then one dumpster to the front door so that I can process corpses a little bit better. So this dumpster is going to go out in the open because I, I don't want there to be vision blockers in this area. So instead I can, I can, um, put the dumpster like way out here so that, uh, it's not so easy for things to hide behind it. And it's also close so that I can very easily grab corpses and clean them up. Carpentry is easily, I mean, there's an argument to be made to the contrary, but I would say it's its definitely the most important crafting skill. Without carpentry, uh, it's very difficult to collect rainwater. There are some rain barrels that exist that are pre-made, but they're very few and far between, and you might not live near any of them. Um... You can't build stairs without it. You can't build shelving. You can't um, barricade things up easily. Uh, the other very useful ones would be electrical and mechanical. Um, auto mechanics. Those are also very, very handy. So that makes uh, cleaning up the corpses a little bit easier. I'm just going to grab these corpses here and then I'll go back to securing the base. So I would say probably having like four or five points of access that are not all next to one another. That's another important point is the way to secure a base. Because if they're all next to one another and if that spot gets swarmed, um, you're sort of stuck. So don't put all of your sheet ropes all along the same row. Uh, row all adjacent to one another 
because if there's like a few zombies at the bottom of them, they're no longer usable. So spread them out. So I'm going to do two more. Actually, I only have wood for one. So one more fence sheet rope. And follow my own device, I'm going to spread it out. I, of course, could get more wood um, from dismantling other things elsewhere. But just like the first one, I'm going to have it on the other side here. So I can go northwest or southeast. And I'm putting it in the nooks here, uh, sort of for a reason, so that it's more reliable uh, for me, the player. If what I What I do find is if you have a sheet rope like here, let's say, it's sometimes hard to calculate whether you're going to interact with the sheet rope or not. And then if it's, if there is no sheet rope there, you're just going to fall and hurt yourself. Trust me, I know. I've done it a lot. Um, so it helps to have it in corners. So that way you can just wedge yourself into the corner and you're more or less guaranteed to be interacting with the sheet rope. Whereas if the sheet rope is sort of floating out in the middle of uh, an area, it's going to be a little bit harder to... Uh, oop, like that. I didn't even mean to climb. It's very, very easy to climb over. Luckily, a single-story fall is not um, too much damage. So here in my health, I haven't broken any bones or anything like that. Just yeeted myself over this side. I think it's because I ran out of uh, nails. So let's continue to dismantle stuff for nails. So I need more nails for, uh, for security. Oh, and there's another plank. I'll bring that up so I can make another fence. This is wood, but I can't break that down. And these shop counters don't, they're counters, they don't have storage in them. So they are not useful necessarily to, um, to pick up and, and move upstairs. Because they wouldn't add storage. A lot of the shelving in there um, could be, I could do the same thing with. My nail game is bad. I might tomorrow have to go. Uh, oh, what's interesting is now it's an open room. Might have to go grab nails from garages and the like. Because I basically just dismantled all that stuff for, for no material. These are oak tables. Oh, one nail. Swell. All that wood stuff, and I got a single nail. All right, it's getting way too dark because I'm so very tired. Let's go ahead and go to sleep. So I have two sheet ropes. And I'm um, going to stick the rest of the planks that are usable there. I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to remove access to the second floor just yet with only two sheet ropes up uh, for, for safety. Wow, this sink is already tapped. Oh, no, it isn't. Was I wrong about the... Uh, you know, I might have been wrong about the cut water. My interaction point... Oh, no, no, I wasn't. There's not enough water in there. Okay. All of my clothing was grayed out because there wasn't enough water in the sink to wash my clothing. And if there was still running water, that wouldn't be the case. So before I go to sleep, weight is still dropping. Let's fatten up. More ice cream. Uh, search nearby garages for nails and other useful tools. I could just keep 
dismantling stuff. I've almost actually leveled up to level three carpentry. Um, but I'm going to take a slightly different tact in trying to find nails instead of just doing more of the same. It's not to say that it's more efficient necessarily. I just want to show the variety. So here I'm just checking to see if there's any zombies below and there aren't. And we can climb down. So I had already driven over to the school. And the reason I mention this is that um, having already driven over to the school, I know that that path isn't choked full of zombies. So if I'm looking for garages, I'm going to head that way. Because I, I, it's already somewhat... The road is already clear. Uh, let's also... I'm going to put the watch and the map... Well, I'll put those in the truck. We're about to get a new weather report, too. You know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go out to the bug out bag. which was the point of interest annotated map spot. If they had prepped properly as a survivor, uh, perhaps there's some really nice things for me to find. Another thing that would be good for me to plan on, given that I do not have a running source of water, is to try to obtain a whole bunch of like buckets and paint cans and the like that can collect water, because we have a giant storm coming in three days, and for me to capitalize on that storm, um, having all those containers would be really nice. Also, cheers! Uh, thank you for the resub, Shell Bell and Laura the Noob. I'm already going the wrong way. There's some nice looking vans back here, too. I'm just checking the ground for car keys. One of the advantages of having multiple cars is once you have a bunch of cars, you can start to treat them like battering rams to kill high volumes of zombies if you need to. Uh, so having a bunch of extra cars is can be useful. So the bug out bag is like one building to my north, but I'm just trying to clear the path so that it's as safe as possible. How do I um, look at the map and pause at the same time? F2. Oh, beta blockers. Nice. So if you're in the map, you can use time controls by hitting uh, F2 or Foxtrot 2 by pausing when you're in your map. You can't bring up the map while paused, but you can pause with the map brought up. It's like a weird order of operations, if you will. Because I'm constantly reading and interacting with my tractor table and everything. Um, it's very handy. So beta blockers reduces panic. So they're... Uh, Loot as many beta blockers as you can. Unless you happen to be a veteran and you're desensitized and never panic. Uh, beta blockers are amazing. So if I have to fight, like, let's say five or more zombies at once, I can just pop some beta blockers and the... Oh, wow. Okay. Everyone around here had heart problems, apparently. They all have beta blockers. Uh, so ideally, I could go into this fight here by luring a few away rather than having to fight them all. Oh, it was... The bug out bag was the Bales Bond building, not the bar or the bright flag in. Okay. It's also worth noting that um, police will often have firearms, nightsticks, which are pretty decent, one-headed blunt weapons, and uh, bulletproof vests. If they do have bulletproof vests on, do not fight them, and, it, and you want it, don't fight them with a sharp weapon, or you will ruin the bullet bulletproof vest in the process. So I've been using a, a crowbar, and one of the advantages of using blunt over sharp is that 
Blunt weapons typically have more, and this isn't always true, but they typically have more durability. And then they will also not destroy the clothing of the zombies that you kill. So we're headed to the bail, bail bonds. That police might have bulletproof vests. It's kind of hard to tell if it's a police jacket or a vest. Yeah, it's a bulletproof vest. So uh, bulletproof vests give you bite defense and scratch defense, very high amounts. It is somewhat insulating. So um, if you're overheating, it's might be the last thing you take off just because of the amount of um, defenses it gives you. But very handy to have. It can't be repaired because it's made. It's not made of cloth, denim, or leather. Uh, but if we take a look at my protection now, if I got scratched to the upper torso, or lower torso, uh, I would not get hurt. At least not from the first scratch. If there's a bunch of zombies and they're scratching me, the first zombie might ruin the bulletproof vest and the next zombie will scratch through it. But at least it will fully protect me from scratches to the torso. And then and it also uh, heavily protects me from bites as well, up to 57%. So bulletproof vests are, are instrumental in working towards high defenses. Because this tutorial is geared for new players, definitely wear it. Uh, sometimes you'll see veteran players wear very little in the way of armor. And it's because armor will also encumber you, slow you down, uh, heat you up. So armor has penalties. Those penalties are only a problem if you basically never get hit. And never getting hit is not something that most new players can say happens. So, new players, wear your armor. Um, I did bring with me some cereal, and I'm just going to eat a quarter of it dry here. Just to get rid of the peckishness and to keep my body weight up. And I've been um, crouched and whispering, trying to fight these zombies rather than like all ten of them at once. Just like two or three at a time, because that's way, way safer to deal with. And we're done. I'm mostly just looking for like electronics that I can dismantle or leather things that I could shred. Before I start smashing windows and making a lot of noise, let's see if I can Jimmy open a window. Not that one. It's also not a terrible idea. Oh, there we go. To let's close this behind me. By tapping E is closing window. Shift E is um, interacting with the curtains. I want to remove the curtains because I need more sheets to cover up windows back home. Just grabbing anything that is a uh, interesting here. Now, hypothetically, there's a bug-out bag somewhere around here. I just don't know where. It's a duffel bag, but it's not a bug-out bag. Because I drove here with a van, I have a lot of carry weight. Oh, a better flashlight. So this flashlight is a lot more illuminating than the hand torch that I had. So my hand torch, I'm going to remove the battery. And I'll hold on to it, because I can dismantle it for electrical skill. Uh... But I'm definitely going to be using the giant flashlight because this thing uh, is much brighter. While I'm here, might as well top up my water bottle. Ooh, that's a lot of fresh produce. Everything into the backpack. And ice cream. Oh, 
Huh, even the gun locker. It's empty. Yo, did you lie about your bug out bag? I feel a little lied to. Bunch of chips. Maybe they bugged out into the forest. Maybe they actually followed their own advice and the bug out bag is like somewhere in the forest. I don't really want to go rooting around a forest for it. Um, when I clear this building. I'm going to go back to the van and drop everything that, uh, that I, I can deposit into the trunk and maybe I'll do the bright flag in next. That might have some bourbon bottles and baseball bats and the like. Possibly even a shotgun. I'll keep the apple on me. So favoriting stuff is really handy because then I can just hit transfer all and everything that I don't want in my backpack just immediately goes to the trunk. A very nice shortcut. That way I don't have to think about, oh, what do I move? What don't I move? I can just do transfer all and it just does it. Oh, you know, it's possible it has floor stashes. I'll go through the bail's bond, bail bonds one more time, making sure to check secret floor stashes. And then also like check around the back of that building because maybe it's around back or something. No, I don't see any floor stash indicators anywhere. Sometimes there's like a... It will look like a, a damaged floor. And it's really just like a... A stash underground. But there's no... There's nothing like that here. Maybe they meant the bug out bag was in the van. Or maybe on a zombie nearby. I don't see any zombies with bags. You can see why I don't want to necessarily go wandering in the forest. Low visibility in a forest full of zombies is just not as fun as it sounds. I've never seen floor stashes under cabinets, but I'm not, uh, you know, I'm mostly looking for nails, so I also, at the same time, don't really care. So, we have cleared that building. Bit old X. I'll check the van. Every now and then, the, um, oh wow, this truck, rather, looks like, oh, it's got keys. And fuel, I'm going to put the key back. Because I can always use it in an emergency. I'll just leave it here. It's got about the same... It's actually barely more storage space than the uh, radio van that I have. Um, but the horsepower differences between the two vehicles is probably... And, and the weight is pretty, pretty considerable. So it's not as a, in good condition. As my car, my car is like 75. This is 61. Um, the engine's louder and lower quality. The muffler's worse. Uh, the battery, the driver's side window, the driver's side, the front two tires, most of the tires. Yeah, it's 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 pretty run down. The bodywork is nice, but a lot of the internals of the car is uh, kind of ruined. So, marking it down is. What I've been saying, just gassed car with keys. That's been the uh, go-to. So now this neighborhood is like completely full of gassed vehicles with keys. There was no, there was no bag or anything. So 
this isn't an inn. Oh, it's an alarmed building. So, this is a good example. Alarmed buildings, there's a chance for, for cars and houses to be alarmed. It's RNG, whether it's alarmed or not. Oh, uh, that zombie has a bag. I'm s I'm gonna be a little risky here. I'm sort of curious if it is our bug out bag. So, new players don't do this. Get away from house and car alarms. No, it just has chips in it. So when you trigger these alarms, it will draw zombies from everywhere around you to come mess with you. So you want to get away from it before you get swarmed. I just saw a dude with a duffel and thought, oh yeah, maybe, but no. Eat a little bit more dry cereal. And I'm gonna continue my search for nails. It's 4 p.m. I still have a little bit more daylight left. I'm gonna go to the garages down here because I need to leave the area um, that is alarmed for my own safety. But there still should be garages down here that are, uh, plenty of garages that are untouched. So I have cleared, so I grabbed the um, the gas cans and the propane from the, this garage. So this garage no longer has those things. I should mark it down as cleared. Um, let me do this garage first at the top of the top of the street and work my way down the street. And in this case, because I'm only looking for nails, there obviously can be nails in utility closets and the like in houses. So sometimes you will find nails in houses, but more reliably you're going to find them in garages and because garages are so much easier to clear than houses, I'm not going in the houses, I'm just going in the garages. And yeah, the, uh, the alarms will draw zombies to them. Oh, uh, paint cans. I was mentioning that I wanted paint cans for rain collection. Uh, so this building had alarms. So meaning all the buildings surrounding it are going to be emptied out as a result. So if I wanted to go to these houses that have garages, I could drive in from the south so as to not disturb the zombies that are clustering here and loot these or these buildings more easily because all the zombies that were around there have been drawn away. So alarms are annoying at times, but they're also very useful. So these paint cans can be used to collect rainwater and I'm gonna pour the paint out on the ground and, uh, and then set them up once I'm back home. Ooh, five sheets, got my attention. Box of nails. Perfect. That's just what I was after. Uh, I'll also take the duct tape and the screws. Don't care about the dust mask. And in this case, uh, I'm going to take the metal bar. Metal bars can be used to make um, barred windows, which are also um, useful as barricades that you can stab through with like a screwdriver or a spear or something like that. And I'm even taking the shelf it's, itself. Taking everything. So I'm very encumbered right now. I need to go straight to the van. But uh, box of nails, I'm going to favorite, stick in my backpack. So I'll be using that in just a second. Shelving units are moved. Transfer everything else. So the paint buckets uh, are pretty good. We're looking for paint buckets, buckets, um, kitchen pot and pans, that kind of thing. I did say that I wasn't um, planning on going through the houses, and I'm still not, but what I am going to do is just go 
peek through the um, the kitchen to see if I can get pots for storage. Oh, there is some zombies coming. All right. The barbecue that I'm next to also has a propane tank in it. This lady's wearing leather. The other guy had a duffel bag with nothing in it. You can mouse over and if it has contents it will show. I'm not exactly sure where that smashing window sound is coming from. But it will make a lot of noise when it smashes. Uh, more fresh produce. I already have a frying pan, don't need another one. I'll take another bowl. It's useful to have like up to four bowls. Oh, I think someone broke in the front. Uh, this one has a handgun. All right, it's fine. And a leather jacket. I think this was a murder-suicide situation, because they don't look like zombies. I think that one shot that one and then shot himself. You know, the, uh, the, hey, we're going to die, so let's go out on our own terms. While I'm out here, fill up my water bottle. I'll remove more curtains, and then we'll get out of this house. I don't want to fully clear this house. I was hoping for pots and pans for water storage, but I didn't find it. It's possible that these side rooms, usually it's laundry, but sometimes the laundry will have utility shelves with nails on them. Not always. Hey, you. I'm a little encumbered, so my combat skill has decreased a bit. Oh, but you had beta blockers, so you were worth killing. We need some fresh corn. Miss Key, thank you for the uh the resub. Cheers, how's it how's it going? Twenty leather strips, that's not bad. I'm also getting drowsy. I have vitamins that I could dip into. But I'd rather not. I have already uh, obtained the nails that I wanted. Um, I will hit one more garage just while I'm out here. And then head home. Generally speaking, like raw food, raw fruits and veggies are like nice. There are a few vegetables that that is not true. Um, but like your character doesn't care if it's like a raw piece of corn. Apparently, that's tasty to them. It looks like... I've already gone through this... garage. I just never marked it down. Oh, that one was the one with the gas cans. I'll take the box of screws. There's not a lot of use case for box of screws. Mostly, you just need nails. Um... Some metalwork, cabinetry, and repairs and the like require screws, but not, not too many. I do feel a little cheated that I that garage was empty, so I'll hit a few more. Each box of nails has a hundred of them in them. So I'll open this one, and then I'm going to favorite all of the nails so I don't, like, dump it anywhere. Your character, if they need nails, won't automatically open up a box of nails, so it's possible that you will not get a prompt for, like, putting out sheet ropes, even though you have a box of nails on you, because your character does not consider a closed box of nails as nails. Meaning uh, it's worth having a decent amount of loose nails on you at all times uh, so that you have that menu prompt. Because if you don't, like, let's say that you're on the second floor of a building and you're getting overrun and it's like an emergency. You need to shoot rope now. You don't want to be fumbling, fumbling around in your inventory, looking through your backpack, trying to open up a box of nails. You just want to go sheet rope down, right? I mean, 
Realistically, if it's a two-story building, you can just jump out of the window, you'll be all right. But like, let's say if it's greater than a two-story drop, yeah, you're definitely gonna, you're gonna want your nails uh, open and available to you and not like deeply nested in your inventory. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow survivors.